Hello, I'm Jesus Labarta, and this is the second of a couple of talks on noise and its impact in the analysis of performance of parallel applications. Today, I'll be focusing on the possibility to extract and eliminate the noise that inevitably will be in the acquisition process uh, in order to come with more precise and more uh, accurate uh, analysis of the performance of our applications. In my previous talk, I actually gave a general description of noise and uh, what I, we understood as noise and how to essentially try to identify it and quantify it. Today, I will be focusing on, as I said, on this what if analysis, what if we were able to eliminate the, the basic noise from our data. The mechanism for doing that elimination is going to be based on DMEMAS. DMEMAS is a simulator that reveals the behavior of uh, parallel applications, MPI applications, under uh, specific characteristics of, for example, machine models like uh, network bandwidth or network latency. The description of DMEMAS itself is uh, the topic of other presentations. I will be using it uh, here. But uh, one of the features that is very important in, in DMEMAS is that the model it implements of the network is noiseless. Essentially, it's very simple, very abstract model with latency and bandwidth and some mechanisms to model congestion. But in reality, there is no noise in the execution of the communication itself. So by using DMEMAS, we will have ways of extracting from the original data the possible noise that may have appeared within the MPI uh, implementation itself. I will be also talking about the mechanism of how to eliminate the impact of the noise detected in the data acquisition on the user level computations. And this is the main core of the, the presentation today. Which the interesting thing is that these two features jointly together also give a, an interesting side effect, which is the possibility of obtaining data in very perturbed uh, situations, for example, sub oversubscribed or heavily oversubscribed runs. And from that data, be able to do predictions of what would be the behavior of our program in uh, platforms of a size larger than what we have available. I'm not going to cover this topic today. I will be focusing on the two, on, on the basic mechanisms. And essentially, the, the main idea of this process is uh, for this mechanism of how to eliminate noise out of the user level code is based on, on, on understanding the mechanism of translation of what is the original parallel trace, which actually captures what actually happened in a, gear, in a real execution, into a DMEMAS trace, which is what characterizes the application, which is then fed into the DMEMAS simulator. In reality, this translation is done by this peer v 2 dim uh, program, where we pass it the input trace file, which is the original capture data, and we generate uh, a new uh, DMEMAS trace file, which will then be used in the simulations. Well, the, the simple trick to determine, uh, to uh, eliminate noise from the capture data in the original trace is to use a mechanism to uh, that uh, generates the, the records, the computation demands, the computation records that are emitted in the DMEMAS trace are captured not from what was in the original data in terms of its actual duration, but what was in the original data in terms of a given hardware counter and a given assumed duration for that hardware counter. In a previous run, we have been able to, in a previous uh, event, we have been able to see, for example, histograms of the cycles of the frequency of, of a machine, and we have been able to identify what the frequency was. By using this frequency, we can say that we see that, for example, this is essentially around something like 0.48 uh, nanoseconds per per, uh, per cycle. And this is the metric that we use to convert the number of cycles, the event that describes the number of cycles, into, into time. This very simple mechanism is what uh, allows us to eliminate noise from the original trace. 
I have in the slide some examples, but this is the actually what I will be covering in the in the demonstration. So let me shift to the demonstration now. Okay, so I have here uh, my Paraver trace already loaded. This is the the original Paraver file uh, which has some noise and which we identified in a previous analyzed in the previous study. I have here a comments of how do we convert from the original trace into the DMMS trace? How do we convert as we I present just presented? with a, a, an approach or a mechanism to eliminate the noise out of the original trace by using the cycles counter and assigning a given cycles per uh, nanoseconds per cycle cost. The number here has to be put in, in seconds for historical reasons. And the idea is uh, we can simulate and we can simulate uh, this is the, the trace that is being simulated. We can simulate the trace we can simulate it with a given latency and bandwidth. We can simulate with a given general description. This file describes in general characteristics of the target machine, but the two most important, which would be latency and bandwidth, so two nanoseconds, two microseconds, and a thousand megabytes per second, are overwritten by this command line option. And then we, we simulate either the original trace or the no noise trace in order to generate the corresponding paraver traces with the nominal characteristics, nominal in this case, meaning this thousand megabytes and, and two microseconds. We can do the same thing with uh, ideal characteristics of the network, which is what this generic uh, configuration file for describing the simulation uh, represents. And we can obtain what would be the performance of that run with an ideal network, infinite bandwidth, zero latency. That's also uh, interesting in order to understand the behavior of the application. With that, the result is uh, I, I've done that. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of uh, around a minute or something like that to do the simulation. And I obtain uh, the traces. I obtain the, have the original trace, the DMMS trace for the original case, assuming an ideal infinite bandwidth network. This is the case where the bandwidth with the nominal bandwidth network. So we have the different configurations. If I uh, load a configuration file to see, for example, the uh, MPI call, uh, let me see, the MPI calls of the of the application, I have loaded it on the trace on the original trace. This is the table which describes the profile of that of that behavior and this is the behavior that I had on the trace where I have computations background color and MPI calls in the in the different MPI calls with different colors in reality um, there are essentially only only three MPI calls there is we can visit there, there is in red the MPI I sense then in white the MPI receives and in dark red the MPI waits. I can I have done the simulations. I can load another of, for example, the simulation of the trace uh, with uh, nominal characteristics of the network. And I will get the same uh, table and the same uh, timeline for this uh, simulated trace file. Comparing the behavior of this trace or the duration of this trace with the original trace, I will be uh, understanding potential uh, effects, potential noise effects that may happen on the uh, on the actual execution. If the parameters that I've given rel correspond to the architecture that I, where I have run the a real machine, the, re the real trace, these two views, uh, let me load the previous configuration, the same one, these two, the two views of the MPI calls in the two runs should be uh, about the same. one 
of course, we can always argue or this, that the duration may not be the same because of the model not being perfect, the latency and bandwidth that they're using not being perfect. But uh, let us compare a little bit the two traces. If we look at the initial phase, this initial phase is kind of pretty similar. So the model, the model with uh, this latency and bandwidth takes a little bit less than the original, but not, not in the initial part, not really in the final part. So the, the model for those parts seems to be relatively okay. And, but the model in this intermediate part seems to say that the time taken by the execution should have been shorter than what it actually was. So this is a potential indication of a noise effect in the communications inside the, this part, which has intensive communications, and uh, kind of help give us a, a more or less quantitative uh, perception of what is the, the impact, not that huge in this case. But in the previous analysis, we identified and we saw that this part did have a significant noise, not only in the MPI, but also in the useful duration parts. So can we apply the mechanism that we have described and can we just load the trace file, which corresponds to the execution of with nominal latency and bandwidth, but out of the trace which has, uh, on which we have eliminated the noise. We have to wait for the load to, for the trace to load. We'll have to apply the same configuration file, and we will see whether the duration has uh, changed or not. Let's, the trace is a trace for of around 300 megabytes, and it's taken a little bit to load, and then we will apply the, the same configuration file. Number of processes is uh, 384 for this trace. Let's uh, load the previous configuration. We'll be computing the histogram again for this case, well, the, the profile, the table for this case. If we copy the scale, copy and paste the time, we will see that in reality, even if this trace actually is a simulation with the same network as this one, the behavior is relatively different in this part, very different in the other part, not really that much. It's, it's, well, in this part, it's actually the same. Okay, and this other part here is also the the same as the other one, very similar to the other one. It's not exactly the same, and the difference comes from the fact that we have eliminated the noise. So what, comparing the two timelines, what we see is eliminating the noise in the computation part has actually had an effect of reducing drastically this communication region. It has also had an effect of, of some reductions in these other parts. So what it means is that in reality, this other part of the computation also had some noise. The change is not that drastic. The importance is not that important. But for sure, in the understanding of this part, the behavior is, is quite different. So if we zoom on the, on the trace of uh, uh, real run, we zoom on the trace and we paste the duration so that they are synchronized. Well, in terms, at least in terms of the X scale being the same. And if I zoom here, the X scale will also be the same. And let me take a little bit closer. And let me paste the duration. We get a, a perception of how the noise in the computations has been important in uh, this pattern that we have here and this perturbation. In reality, 
in the in these traces what we what we observe is if we load uh, a configuration file which would be the useful duration for this is the the histogram of useful duration for the first original trace You can see it. Copy and paste the time to focus on the region which seemed to show big difference between the two runs. Let me zoom even a little bit more. Let me fit the color in the scale. And let me copy again the scale. If I were to do what we see that is that in the original trace we had some long computations intermixed with very small fine grain computations. If I were to do the same thing on the intermediate on this trace file, because this one derives directly from that other one, I would see the very same uh, long durations which actually belong to noise. Let me nevertheless do the same configuration file applied to the uh, trace where I have extracted. The, the noise selectively reduced the duration of those computations that the based on the cycles counter should have not taken the time that they have taken in reality right? we can derive what is the time they should have taken we can use that time and we can we have this is for this case So I can copy the scale from here to here and I can see that in reality the method in this part the method has been able to eliminate so I can copy the semantic scale to here and, and we really see that we no longer see the large computations which were actually noisy. So this is what the mechanism has been able, been able to achieve. Now, essentially, all of the computations take about the same amount of time, and which something which typically matches with what many programmers would try to do in trying to have very balanced and every process computing for the same amount of time. So it shows that the, 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 the noise has been extracted, eliminated from the, from the run. We could even now look at what is the performance of this. Is it good or is it bad? Of course, much better than the reality, but is it still good or not? So we have been able to extract the, con the conclusion towards uh, the either the infrastructure or the platform or the runtimes to try and, and minimize noise. But is there any information for the programmer of the application? And in reality, we can probably load the uh, uh, another configuration file which would be telling us the instantaneous parallelism and this is on the DMMA simulation without noise and so we can copy and paste the time to here and we see that in this part we have about half of the processors uh, on average active only half of the processors of course we could have done the same thing on the other f file and we would actually have observed a much worse behavior but the message is there is a still or the sh let's let's do it copy and paste the time and we will see that in reality the behavior is is significantly worse this, there are this kind of reductions in the number of uh, concurrent processes, which is caused by the operating system, by the by the noise, by the, those preemptions. But uh, still, eliminating the noise is, is even if it doesn't improve significantly the performance, it still says that there are still issues with the dependencies of the application, with it being still sensitive, for example, to communication, because ideally we would like to have the maximum 
parallel efficiency, the instantaneous parallelism equal to the number of processors. And as it is now, it's only about half that number. With this, I'm going to close this uh, short uh, demo and uh, hope it has been useful and informative. And uh, hope to see you in later uh, presentations. Thank you.